Today we are back on with the Princess. So it's been a while. Obviously we did a little update video on what we was gonna do with it. Um, I am conscious to keep, keep cracking on with it and I've been doing some bits and bobs. The end of like, the last fabrication video, we talked about needing to get it on the lift to start doing these chassis rails, which were gonna be crucial in connecting the front and rear subframes together because of how like weak and rusty the actual car shell is. I've got those kind of tacked in now. I'd originally put in like a, a kind of quarter chassis rail at the front and I've now extended that right to the back of the car and I've begun to tie that in to those original front of the rear subframe mounts, which was basically like the first couple of episodes that we did. So we're actually really starting to tie the major structural components of the car together now. And what I need to do is then create what is like the rear over subframe chassis leg, which is gonna pick up on the uh, suspension turret and then the front and rear subframe mounts and just literally tie it all together. So there's gonna be a bit of sheet metal work in that. Um, again, using mostly three mil plate, it's a little OTT, but I wanna make sure that I'm getting as much strength in here as I possibly can. Weight's not that much of a concern to me. Um, I just want it to be absolutely bulletproof. So it's gonna be a case of lots of cardboard patterns and uh, cutting out some more sheet and getting it tacked in. So yeah, let's get cracking. So I've got these chassis legs now, kind of, I've got one side fully welded in, the other side's still not fully welded in yet, but you can see what I mean by taking these chassis legs front to back now and tying them in with the rear subframe mounts. There'll be some uh, cross sections in here, probably some tubular cross sections or maybe one box section one just behind the gearbox mount to try and strengthen everything up. But then I'm gonna get to a point where hopefully I can take the whole floor of the car out because it's all rusty all of the sills and inner sills have got to go, but we're going to cross that bridge later. We're going to get it like mechanically and kind of all the suspension components sorted first. But this is a big moment because the car is now actually lifted up on the chassis legs, which is quite a nice moment because I now know that every time I lift the car up, uh, you know, it's not moving around and bits of rust aren't falling off and it's going to be the same every time. So yeah, we're at a point now where we just need to build these rear chassis legs. We're kind of 90% there on the structural stuff. So I've tied in these rear mounts now. As you can see, the chassis leg comes down the car and it like kinks back out again to get it underneath this front of the rear subframe mount. This is the bit we did in like episode one or two and I've kind of plated it all in. It's all a bit messy at the minute. I've got unfinished welds and nothing dressed up, but that is now starting to put some real strength and structure into the whole car, kind of negating the body. Like we're, we're almost at the point where we don't need the body to like hold the front and rear wheels together, which is where I want it to be because I want to get all the strength and then not have to worry about like the engineering that Austin did, you know, in the 70s, because that's not going to be up to a rear wheel drive, 500 horsepower car with nine inch wide wheels on it. You know, I want it to, I want to be able to like know that the car's solid. So of course we will need some strength in this to go between, um, definitely behind the gearbox, as I said, but then maybe one or two more further down the chassis, just to try and tie everything together. I may end up with one between the subframe mounts that kind of, hangs down like a tubular one, um, just as an additional strengthener, kind of like additional strut bars you'd buy aftermarket, I guess, but just, you know, bolted in for me. But yeah, now we're at a case of, we need to tie this front of the rear subframe mount into the turrets and rear mount. So this chassis leg has now come down the car, it's going up, it's now got to go over the rear subframe and tie right into the back here. Okay, so I've got some cardboard patterns cut out. So this is gonna sit in here. So it's gonna connect that big block mount for that front of the rear subframe mount up to the turret. And then that's gonna form kind of the, the bottom or base of the, uh, of the start of this chassis leg. And we're gonna build like a big box chassis leg, which is gonna connect the two of these together. Um, and I've got another cardboard pattern, which is gonna go like, so, so you get the idea, like I'm gonna create like a bit of a box section, basically. One way of uh, translating a cardboard pattern um, onto sheet steel in a way that you can see it, like if you try and draw around it, when you're cutting it with an angle grinder, you can't see that line. And as soon as you get any heat into it, you burn the Sharpie mark away. And of course it's not strong enough to like scribe down the edge of it. So what I do is I like get it nested where I want it to be. And then on all of the corners, I put a center punch 
you know, just like centre punch your way around inside all of the corners. I mean, it's not going to be like perfectly accurate, but it's going to be pretty close. Close enough for what like most people need. So like on all of the corners. And then when you take your pattern away, you know where it wants to go. So now I'll go between my corners on the centre punch and just hold a steel rule down. And then I can scribe down with my centre punch. And I can get a really decent scribe that no matter how much heat I put into this panel, I'm still going to be able to, to see it. And if I'm not sure, if I didn't like centre punch it strong enough or I just want to double check, you can literally just lay your pattern back over the top again and you know where it needs to be. If you try and use a Sharpie, again, by the time you get any heat into it, you just cannot see um, when you're cutting it, when you've got your PPE on, you just cannot see that Sharpie line. So that's just a really nice, easy way of uh, translating a paper pattern onto a sheet. Right, so I've got this uh, this first plate chopped out and that will drop in just there and that's pretty close. I've got an angle in it to give me plenty of clearance over the anti-roll bar. Um, I mean, that's way more clearance than I need, but when I put the side on, the side is actually gonna drop down. I'm doing that for two reasons, because it'll make a box section on top because obviously like, I'll have two sides come up and then one piece on top. But if I drop it down as well, it's just gonna add in extra strength to, to where this fold is basically. I just wanna try and get as much strength in as possible. That fits on there pretty well. The only thing is I've got this plate that's in the way. One of these original plates that I put in to hold the strut tower in position. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut that out now. There is one welded on the other side and one welded here. I've got a beam in between the two strut towers. It shouldn't move. Um, what I'll do is I'll release the welds and then see if it does move. If it does, I'm actually going to have to drop the subframe off and put in my jig, but I'm, I'm pretty confident it won't. So yeah, we'll cut that out and then we can actually get this tacked in. We've got this bit tacked in. I've got my other piece cut out now. I've got a little fold in it at the end. Um, and that, that will slot in there pretty much. The fit's it's good enough for what we need. Yeah, it's just gonna be a case now of getting that tacked in as well. And then once we've got this tacked in and then one on the other side, I can go ahead and weld all this up. Um, and then what I'll do, I'll clean it all out, fill it all with uh, primer, and then I will make a top for it. And once it's got a top on, that's gonna become then one solid structural beam, which is gonna tie that rear turret in. And then we can think about the rear mount. Got that tacked in on the other side as well now. So we've basically got kind of uh, a channel section with no top on it now. So I'm gonna weld it all up on the inside as much as I can on the outside. And like I say, that's then gonna allow me to, before I put the top on, I can kind of get it all cleaned up, put a load of etched primer in there and it'll just keep the surface rust off it um, and hopefully try and stop it getting a bit moist. Once I, once I get a bit further along with the build, I'll probably put a couple of holes in underneath and they'll act as drain holes and also wax injection holes um, just to try and preserve it. I don't think this car's ever gonna spend enough time out in the rain to really get wet or damp as such. But again, these are just some of the kind of finishing touches we'll do further down the line. But yeah, it's ready to get welded up now. So gloves on, let's get it done. that welded in now so we've got the kind of center or bottom piece um, you'll see from underneath why I'm calling it uh, like centerpiece it's because it's kind of gusseted going down as well uh, but we've got that bit in 
we got it all welded up and now we can think about putting a, a kind of top on it we obviously need to do the same again on the other side which you know now that we've done it once it won't take off as long because i've kind of got the patterns and the patterns might just need a little bit of trimming we've got our you know our cardboard uh, patterns same again on the other side get it all welded up and then we're at a point where even without the tops on i'm pretty sure there'll be enough strength in it that we can um lose this last strengthener between the uh, strut tower and the wheel arch, which we don't have on the other side anyway, because the wheel arch has already been cut out. Um, and then we can start thinking about this rear subframe mount. So we'll get the other side sorted, and then we will start thinking about how we're gonna do this rear mount and tie the rear mount into the turret. Right, got them welded in. Um, not the easiest position to get into to weld, but they're done now. Um, and now, instead of putting the tops on first, because I've still got a bit of welding to do underneath um, and some kind of gaps to fill in as such, I'm gonna focus on this rear mount. Because if I can get these rear mounts done, it allows us to take all of this box section frame out, which is gonna start to make it look much more like a real car at that point. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this bolt out of here. I'm going to chop this piece of box section off square. Hopefully I can get it off nicely in position without damaging the bush underneath it. And then I'm basically going to have a piece of tube um, with a circle welded on top. And that's going to drop on top of, directly on top of the bush. And then I'm going to have a triangle piece of three mil plate again, just shooting off to the turret, top and bottom. And then I'll probably have like a bit of a gusset in the middle maybe. But yeah, first job is to get this bolt out, cut that off, get a bit of tube cut of a bigger diameter than this, um, set it up with you know plate welded top and bottom and a hole through it, and uh, yeah, we'll see. What, yeah, we'll see what happens then. So I've got a piece of tube cut. Um, probably went a bit OTT really on the size, but uh, you know it's what it's what I felt right when you know I ordered it. I want surface area basically. It'll become more obvious when I um, kind of continue. But so that is going to sit there, and there'll be a piece of tube which sits inside, and it'll hang out a little bit so that it locates inside the bush. Um, again, I've gone a little bit undersized, um, and I'll square it up before we actually weld it in i'll make sure it's bang on in the middle of that hole and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a plate which runs underneath here back to here and a plate on top which goes back to there and then i'll probably fill in the sides as well so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to measure the distance between the center of this hole or as close as i can measure i'll leave it a little bit long so i can trim it back and the center of here start to translate that onto card you know draw around put a radius on because i know this is a six inch radius um, and yeah try and make a paper pattern cut it out in steel cut a hole in it and uh yeah same again on the top same again on the other side So we got that plate cut out and it fits in pretty well. Always helps to really try and get the cardboard pattern because you'll never cut the steel out exactly the same as the pattern is. So if the pattern is like bang on, then you know, even if your steel is slightly inaccurate, you're gonna be pretty close. But yeah, so you can now see where I'm going with this. So I'll have a plate in at the bottom and this tube will drop down a few mil to like locate the subframe when you're putting it up from the underneath. That piece will go on top and they'll all be welded together. And then there's gonna be another piece on top there. And then I'll obviously fill in the sides, both sides. Um, and then that, that will hopefully be strong enough to uh, tie in the rear of the rear subframe mount to the turret. And the turret's tied in to the front 
like half of the rear chassis leg and then it all starts to come together and become really strong. So a bit more cutting, a bit of welding, and then we can just hopefully drop that in, bolt it up, weld it onto the turret, same again on the other side. So we've got this tigged up. I actually, I've been trying to tig the bits that are probably gonna remain seen. Um, and this, this point will remain seen in the boot floor, I would imagine. Um, so I've like tigged that round nicely. So I've got that tube in the center, which is gonna like support the, the bolt as we, as we tighten it all down to stiffen the whole mount up. So it's a nice like 3D structured part. What I'm gonna do now is I have got a bolt, but I haven't got a nut which goes on it because it's a really long bolt I need now. Probably I've got a nut kicking about somewhere, but I can't find one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like clamp it in position. I'm gonna use a big G clamp, clamp this in position, MIG tack it on, weld it on and then um, do the same again on the other side and then we can start cutting out some of this, uh, this box section. It'll start like a real car again. So we got about as far as we can get today. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. It's starting to look like a proper car with some proper chassis legs. And I'm starting to think about like a boot floor where I could put fuel tank and starting to chop out some of this box section frame that we put in months ago. Hopefully for the next episode, you'll see these chassis legs finished, all ground up, putting some etch primer on them and starting to look like something that's had a lot, a lot of hours put into it, because they have been. Having said that, I am now gonna have to start splitting my priorities on this project between this and the Allegro from the Late Break Show. Johnny's Allegro has been here before to have some lower arms done. It's just been delayed for whatever reason. So we've now got the car to kind of more or less finish, I guess, or, or figure out all of the engineering challenges around why it's taken so long. So we're gonna have to cut the whole front end off. We've got to like pretty much re-engineer all of the running gear, all of the um, front and rear suspension, fuel tank location, radiator, forced induction side of things, engine mounting. There is so much work that's got to go into this car probably more than with the Princess. The beauty of the Princess was that we started out with a car. We started out with two cars and we kind of mashed them together. There's been a lot of fabrication involved, but the Allegro is kind of less than a car really, because it's, it's kind of got like golf hubs on it, E30 coilovers. There's so many like mix match of parts that we've got to try and re-engineer into making a full car. So hopefully in the next few weeks, you'll see some updates on this as well which I'm, I'm really excited about, but it's a massive engineering challenge. It's gonna take quite a while just to get it to a point where we're even really able to show something significant on it. But the plan is to have something to show for the end of April. So catch you next time. Thanks for watching.